Progressing from a beginner to an intermediate climber, you'll likely find that boulders start to require some more complicated climbing techniques. In this video, I teamed up with Ben, a development coach based out of the climbing hangar, to walk you through four of the most common of those techniques to help you on your way to sending harder boulders. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, I am here with a guest. This is Ben. Welcome to the channel, Ben. Thanks for having me. Today, Ben is going to be kind enough to take us through four intermediate techniques Techniques to help improve your climbing. I like to break it down as to heels, heels are for pulling and toes are for, for pushing. Okay. And you can use heels, heel hooks to pull you closer into the wall, get your hips in, center of gravity right over the feet. Uh, just to quickly demonstrate how that might work, if I put my heel in and don't really engage, I'm putting a lot of pressure on this arm, you can see it's, it's bent, muscles engage, but I can pull myself in with the heel closer to all the holes, always to the point where I can completely let go, almost. I'm sure there's other ways through it where you don't really need to employ the heel hook. Maybe okay. muscling through it will get you through, but I think uh, a heel hook better suited. You can see there's a nice groove for your foot to your heel to go into. As you grab that, you can switch it to the toe. Nice. Swing around and perfectly in position make the next few moves. When you put your heel in, yeah. what what did you notice about what were your legs doing? Like for instance, give you a very leading question. Good question. About, yeah. I'm not sure. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> it so, also kind of happens quite naturally, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I guess because this hold is, is really quite nice, mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted my heel kind of like in the good groove. Right, yes. And I also think I was quite conscious of pulling in on my like hamstring and to do that pointing right, my right, yeah. toe for sure down so i guess i was kind of maybe not actively conscious but intuitively trying to place my foot so that i had room to point the toe right yeah yeah that's cool and also i was thinking about absolutely yeah hooking for sure <laughs> yeah this act, like i guess you could call it like this kind of subconscious process of yeah. like applying the pressure through the heel so it's not just kind of resting because that's just kind of useless isn't it yeah. so now you can actually engage your your muscles in the back of the leg to reach further and then also if you, if you stay on the heel you're very limited in the mobility yeah, sure. so to then know when to switch it to a toe so you can keep moving about the climb so I guess it's a case of like identifying, and perhaps that comes down to root reading ultimately. When you approach a climb, taking stock of the holds, the footholds, the handholds you've got available yeah. to you, and figuring out where it might be really useful to take that pressure off your arms, and oh, where sure. it might be useful to whack in a heel. And like if you keep popping off a climb at the same point, it's, if you put a toe on, like why does this keep slipping? Yeah. Are you not able to put as much pressure through that toe? I just mechanically, the way that works on the wall. Yeah. Like really have to dig that toe in. Yeah, That's sure. a lot of effort. Um, whereas if you've got a bit more your climbing brain switched on, you can see your heel sits quite comfortably in there. Sure. It's a good introduction to heel hooks for sure. So sometimes the heel hooks are well hidden in yes. amongst the grass like a Pokemon. <laughs> um, let's give this a good brush because it is quite tricky. As I was saying previously on that blue, if I apply the toe, um, sure that gives like a good amount of rubber on the hold, but I can't really exert loads of pressure through the toe at the, uh, the angles I'm at on the wall. So I'll grab the start holds. If I drive in through the toe, oh. Nice. I mean, it's doable. Yeah. But it's really hard, it's quite it's, difficult. Yeah. Whereas if um, we place the, the heel and use our heel to pull us in, yeah. oh, you've got loads, loads of times we've got to move. Compared to the blue hole, there's like, there's no kind of groove for your heel to sit in, is there? Um, it's all about the, the direction of pull you want to go in. I want to pull myself that way. So I can see that I want to use this side of the hole. Whereas I can demonstrate kind of bad technique with the heel. Like just there, oh, it gets you through. Yeah. But again, I'm really having to try quite hard on that. Okay. And frankly, I just want to make things easier for myself. <laughs> but if we're a bit more thoughtful, about our heel placement and the direction we want to pull in. Makes the move dead easy. Whoop. Nice. Nice. Excellent. 
Okay. What did you notice then? Like, were you conscious of what your, your, your legs were doing, what your heel was doing? Yeah, so I think I was quite conscious of, and don't really know if no, this go is for super it. relevant. All input's valuable. Like kind of bouncing height. So right. rather than, I guess like doing most of the movement yeah. with momentum, which is something yeah. we're going to cover later, <laughs> to be able to engage the heel. So rather than like placing my heel like this, yeah. And being like, I'm really tiring out that hamstring. Right. I use this to kind of like get over the top of it, really yep. push on this so that I could make the most out of the heel. Yeah, for sure. That's excellent. That was really good. Yeah. Good thought Thank process there. Um, about not like really locking yourselves in these positions. Whilst we can, you know, and it's debatable how much energy you'd waste on a, yeah. on a single move like that. Uh, if you can find a slightly more effective little bounce momentum to get you through, I'd, I'd say that's more effective. So we've been very much looking at demoing heel hooks on the wall, yes. but there's things that you can do off the wall, right? Absolutely. That make sure that when you need to utilise a heel hook on the wall, you're feeling prepped and you're feeling confident. Absolutely. So do you have advice for those off the wall things that you can be doing to make sure that heel hooking is kind of like a strength of yours? For sure. Um, I think you touched upon it before about how we warm up the, the upper body and the fingers and the shoulders, but uh, warming up the lower body is just as important. I mean, you use your legs just as much in climbing. Yeah. And heel hooks, particularly, if you're not thoroughly warmed up, likely to get a little little twinge in, in the back of the leg there. Okay. Like, I've just done that blue, what, <laughs> five times, five or six times, and it's already Break let me know. You should have warmed up properly. <laughs> um, so yeah, any kind of warm up you can do for your posterior chain, really. Okay. A particular favourite of mine is uh, the glute bridge. Okay. Um, just, do you want me to demonstrate? Yeah, go for Get it. on the ground. So you'd set yourself up like this, and um, you're basically trying to bring your belly button up to the sky, and as you reach the top of the bridge, you're like squeezing your glutes, but also focus on as if you were pulling your heels towards you. Okay. So like they're driving yeah, yeah. into the ground, and then, I was also taught recently about when you lower to really like one at a time, each vertebra of the spine okay. relax into the ground. You can do a few of them to warm up. You can focus on single leg ones. Ooh, that steps up. It does a bit, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then we can get even more specific to the sport where we increase the length and actually rather be flat footed as one of the heels and explore okay. that kind of movement. And I think that's very, uh, transferable to heel hooks on the wall. So we talked a little bit about uh, momentum on this climb, mm. but I feel like something that starts becoming much more a feature of the problems that you're trying at the intermediate level is being encouraged <laughs> to move dynamically. Yes, there are ways around dynamic movement. You can develop a very static style, but mm -hmm. oftentimes, as we all know, it's easier to work with momentum and work with movement rather than fighting against it. Absolutely, So, yeah. I'm going to move into some dynamic movement. We'll I'm going to hand go. over to you we'll give it to a find try. Some, some boulders that, um, I guess, show or give good examples of where um, using dynamic movement is a really good intermediate technique to have in your arsenal. Before we get into the dynamic section of the video, I wanted to thank The Climbing Hunger for supporting this video and remind you that with Hannah 50, you can get 50% off your first climb at any climbing hunger. These are, this is the, the perma set, it's always here. So I've, I've come up with a little bit of dynamic exercise on this. There's a little bit of an introduction I find. Okay. Kind of take a bit of the, uh, the fear and intimidation out of the movement. Okay. As if you can break it down bit by bit and step by step yeah. in these kind of easier progressions. Uh, your brain starts to go, oh, I can do this. We can yeah. do it, okay. So you can just begin with a simple whoop. Establish on the wall with no hands. Take the side pull. So I always think it's kind of important as well, as, as nimble as the arms are, they can look after themselves in that regard. Yeah, I because, can. Whereas the legs, really strong, but I always find they're a little bit clunky sometimes. So okay. you gotta look after them by watching what you're doing with your feet, okay. first and foremost. So look at the foot holds. And then the hand it just goes there, doesn't it? And then we can pull. Okay. See how it feels. Excellent. All right, let's try the next step then, where we establish. And then maybe we'll do a little tap on, so just give that one a... Give it a tap. Give it a little tap with the foot. Nice. 
I think I find with dynamic movement like this, so much of it is about uh, obviously practice, but learning with that practice, mm -hmm. learning like your centre of gravity in a way that you do get when you're doing, I guess, like beginner climbs, but not in the same way, not so much in like timing yeah, comes into yeah. it so much more, Definitely. I feel. Um, I guess as you start to have like less points of contact, static contact right. with the wall. Yeah. You're really relying on like understanding what your body's going to do Definitely. in the middle of motion. Yeah, yeah, where you feel like your hands aren't on and they can't yeah. save you at all on the feet. Yeah. Yeah. We're, but then all, all the, the kind of principles of climbing and, and movement just come into play naturally. Yeah. How once there's weight through a foot over a volume, it's very unlikely to slip. Okay. And allow it to freeze up the hands for the I've next move. I've heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Mm, you made yeah. a little noise then. What was that noise about? I think I'd already kind of decided that it hadn't gone well before I'd... Not that it hadn't gone well, but mm. that I hadn't really, like, generated enough over that way. I see. So. Okay. I think what might help with that is actually just throwing the handhold in. Nice. Well, that's good. Um, we don't really have to account for any kind of swing there, because... Yeah. We're pulling in the direction of this hold. This foot's nicely planted. And we've got a good left foot as well. Zero chance of barn build. Nice hammer. All right, we go one step further because <laughs> if we look straight down at the wall, yeah. these, the hold and the foothold, uh, they're very um, in line. Okay. Whereas if we just offset the handhold slightly, to the it's going to shift one. our center of gravity. Edge of the volume, we can hang back, get loads of pull off this arm. It's the idea that I'm not going to be able to stop Correct. on that because yeah. otherwise I'm going to go. I'll do a okay. little spinning off the wall, yeah? Okay. It's <laughs> better. Oh, excellent, mate. So you got okay. the reach. Yeah, there, isn't okay. It? And I think, yeah, maybe that's uh, like what always amazes me is how good your body is yeah. at being like going from something feeling very far away, mm. very alien to like, oh, okay. And I find with this kind of stuff, like once you get, I mean, this might, oh, this theory might fall apart in the next go, go but once you're, once you've done it once and you get close, the chances of you being able to replicate the same thing and get a little further or higher. Yeah, yeah, your brain's locking in I think it's called the... confidence. Confidence, <laughs> it's called, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> a lot of it is confidence, isn't it? <laughs> How, the dynamic movement we've just been doing and how that translates into set routes for, you know, intermediate climbers, people who are starting to take it a bit more seriously and how, mm -hmm. how that works and understanding when to do it as well. Sure. So you, uh, a quick examination of the holds you're given on this blue. Starts here, you've got a foot hold, there's a volume and this, which I suggest just from a bit of root reading, the amount of black on it that is Might be a, a foothold. Um, so we can just instantly see big old move that isn't it? Yeah. With a bit of dynamic movement. Nice. Did a little bit of foot swapping there. What, yeah, was, what were you thinking about that? Yeah, I kind of felt it out. I guess because I maybe exploited the fact that I felt quite comfortable on that hold mm. and strong enough to kill the momentum. Right, yeah. If I didn't, if that hold were any worse, yeah. or perhaps I'd put a little bit more force into the jump, Yeah. because of the way the hold is angled, it's like a left jug, I yeah. wonder if I would run the risk of barn dooring, because I, I jumped off. off the left <laughs> leg okay. and caught with the left hand, which yeah. leaves me quite open. True, it does, yeah. So I just was, I guess, scouting out how it might feel to be more like this in a more like yeah, I get stable that. That makes position. Sense. Um, like the, there is, what you're trying to, uh, what you're describing there is basically how this slightly harder red works in that regard and how we um, kill momentum to mm -hmm. stop ourselves from spinning off the wall after doing a dynamic move. Ah, uh, okay, I see so it. So as the holds are quite like straight here, yeah. like, pretty much in a line, whereas with more sideways, 
like we were doing over there and trying to break down these moves and feel out what we're doing. Yeah. We, I can instantly see that we're going to have to do a little foot swap. Yeah. If we don't, um, we're going to peel off the wall. Uh, like that. Yeah. All right. Aiming for a pocket as well, so you've got to be accurate. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So without that, you just catch that pocket off this volume. Sure. Yeah. You'll spin out. An area that is perhaps neglected in mm. climbing is the importance of pushing and yes. pressing and palms and this kind of movement yeah, yeah. rather than this kind of movement. For sure, definitely. What Should we just jump straight into some, some pushing Should find moves, a pushing then? or a palmy climb? Yeah, come on, let's have it. I know this one this begins one. immediately. The palm. I don't know if we try and root read straight away if I I'm just uh, going to put okay. myself into that position anyway, aren't I? So, mm -hmm. I can set myself up a bit more thoughtfully already. The importance of um, pushing and straight arm strength. And you could see straight away if I start it like this. You can, but you just turn it into this move anyway. Yeah. Um, and this kind of demonstrates the importance of um, finding stability with opposite hands and feet sure to free up this hand so i've got i'll have a good left hand with you with you yeah if i step on there with the right freeze up that hand yeah to make that one That straight arm oh, strength. Nice, nice, nice. With good pressure through the toe. Left hand, right foot. Yeah. Engage on that. It's a really nice in cut crib. Nice. And just like the top. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so yeah, it's we could well. if you, we step step up to this. Sure. And we haven't got any kind of strength in the arm. There's a bit of bend in it. Don't know. There's no pressure either through the toe though without that straight arm. Yeah. So the straight arm pushing strength, we're in, straight away. Reach quite far off. Yeah. Right? So would you say where possible with like, broadly speaking, for pushing movements, if you're able to like lock out your arm? I think so, yeah. The, yeah. Potentially the better. Yeah. Just for um, a maximum uh, reach and yeah. mobility. Sure. Um, the straight arm. For leaning, like if you, I don't know, if we got into a side plank, for instance, which is essentially what you're doing on the wall. Yeah. You're gonna do this. If you have any kind of bend. Yeah. It puts a lot of pressure. All the sure. muscles are engaged. You could definitely hold this straight arm okay. plank for much longer. Okay. That's the way. Nice hand it. Excellent drop knee there. I haven't read the rest of the route. Where am I going? <laughs> We're going up this right. way. It's these, uh, yeah. Okay, another. So I'd uh, have a little think about this next move because it is an in-cut crimp you go into. And I'm slightly concerned about you. <laughs> Me too. So this feels spooky. Applying enough pressure to the right foot. Yeah, and that's straight arm strength. Nice. Excellent. A little Choice of footholds. Take your pick. Oh, go for the high one. The dynamic lunge. Is it good on the top? It's all right, you know. Yeah, go ahead. Lovely staff. Ooh. Nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's like starting in quite a bent arm position. And there, that's straight arm strength. Any kind of bend. And I'll probably just fall back in unless I take this hold sure. as a Gaston. But then with a the Gaston, I guess um, it can limit mobility as well and reach. Whereas yeah. if I'm pushing away, I just get a bit of extra reach there. Yeah. I wonder how that would feel with a Gaston, actually. Feels yeah. disgusting. <laughs> I hate it straight away. <laughs> I regret okay. that decision. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it's knowing 
have lots of different directions to push in, lots of different ways you can have your hand. Yeah. Knowing which one is the best option Definitely. in any given situation. I think um, root reading these kind of yeah. like big compy holes, they don't, whereas like, we look at that purple we were just on, it kind of telegraphs what it wants us to do. Yeah. But this one, um, less obvious. <laughs> it's giant, what am I supposed to do yeah. with this? And you've got to get on and feel out and your body will kind of contort itself in the yeah. positions it needs to be. So you'll notice straight away, you, if you start with these bent arms, like yeah. you're, you'll just immediately go into a straight arm position. Where am I going? Am I? Okay. <laughs> About it. Just have a bit of fun. That's it. There's that, there's that pressing strength there, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. That's the way. Oh. <laughs> I think that goes back to like what you've seen about how we position yeah. and for the push and how the shoulder externally and internally rotates, but can also be a limiting factor. Yes. If we turn the hand the wrong way, maybe. What would I change? Um, I feel like I'm doing a lot of pressing, but not very effectively. A lot of pressing, not a lot of moving though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only thing I noticed was uh, you went with the right foot high first. Which okay. Which immediately kind of like pushes you in the yes. direction you don't want to go. Okay. Whereas if you've got the left foot up. Root reading. <laughs> nice. Then it's already oh, yeah. taken yeah, us yeah. to where we want to go. A good straight arm strength, bit of balance there. Yeah, nice. That's the way. That's good, mate. So much, so much easier with the setting up with the right foot. Yeah. Like I was able to press through this, but it was quite physical in the first it's physical, attempt, and I was like, oh. Whereas that was a lot more like, and that can not quite breezy, but it was breezier. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly breezier. Yeah. Uh, I guess that sort of translates into like how we prepare ourselves for the climbs. Um, yeah. We can all warm up with a couple of pull-ups or some finger exercises, but how do we warm up the pushing muscles for stuff like this? Okay. I guess that leads us quite nicely into how do you warm up? How do you? For pushing muscles. <laughs> Just smash a cup of coffee and get on the wall. No, don't do that. <laughs> um, well, I think it demonstrated on that purple. Um, plank. Okay. Good side plank. Your, your normal standard plank. With good form, obviously. We've got straight arm strength, pushing out through the shoulders. Nice and strong and stable. Uh, nice line along the body, so you're like squeezing your glutes to protect the lower back almost. Sure. And that just isometric holds. We can make planks harder for ourselves if you lift, uh, elevate your feet slightly. And that'll get it warmed up even more so. I'm pretty yeah. sure the higher you put your feet, the more into the shoulders, the warm will go rather than through the sure. chest. So the last technique we are going to cover is flagging and foot swaps. A foot swap and a flag kind of go very mm -hmm. foot in foot, not hand in hand. Sure, hand I like hand. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, especially, I think, when you've got longer limbs and a bit taller, swapping feet and flagging. Yeah. I think, I'm just like jumping straight in, like watch this. So, so excuse me, I'm just very enthusiastic about climbing. <laughs> <laughs> if I set myself up like this, you can see my centre of gravity is away from the wall. If I don't foot swap here, and I go for the next hold, sure. just spin right out. Yeah. However, by swapping feet, I'm not necessarily even using the foothold, but my flagging. 
very nice. If our feet are apart, we've got a nice and stable base, but when a hand is released, um, you've either got a stable base with your feet or the hands, and I think it's always preferable to have it with the feet rather than the hands, because your legs are stronger than your hands. So we've got a stable yeah. base, but as we move along the wall, and our sense of gravity is shifting, and the handholds are quite narrow here, we've got a stable base either side of them, all the way through. Yeah, nice. And I guess that's like filters through from the climbs we tried previously in the session. So like yeah. the dynamic ones, that again is the stable base, right? It's the yeah, yeah. making sure that your finishing position is stable. Definitely. Rather than encouraging your body to bond or be spinning all over the show. Yeah. yeah. Definitely preferable. And um, I think it comes in, in with flagging. I think the holes on this are very generous in that yeah. we can do a lot of pulling into the wall and you know massive jugs. Maybe if we take a bit of a, a more relaxed grip on it, it will encourage us to flag a bit more. I'm not sure. So that's even a wider base there than the actual the yeah. one the given me. So there's loads of stability there. Yeah. To swap back. Sure. Like if I were to like push you over now and you're <laughs> stood like, like this, I do demonstrate this with people then actually. you'd fall over, yeah, right? Yeah. Whereas if I were a tripod, yep. you'd have to push a bit harder to get me to fall over. That's exactly right, yeah. So the the more you can, I don't know if brace is the right word, but like create a, a wider, yeah. within reason, like a yeah, wider base, a then you, you can operate in a more stable Absolutely, yeah, way. definitely. Okay. Um, there's a good overhang here with some yeah. flaggy things in as well. Should yeah, we I feel like that? overhang, it comes into its own flagging yeah. on, and heel hooking actually, Definitely, yeah. on overhang because you can't rely on your arms as much to do the work. Like you have to use your body position. Yeah, pulling yourself up the wall with your arms. <laughs> I mean, it's doable if you're dead strong, but yeah. uh, it's always uh, certainly preferable to use your legs. So there's a couple of uh, flags and foot tops in this and how we um, keep our centre gravity over our feet as much as possible. Whereas if, you know, we can see footholds, be like, right, there's my footholds. I'll plant my feet on then. Straight away, quite narrow, I've not got much. It's yeah. doable, but I've got to kind of generate this weird kind of swing. Oof. Yeah. Whereas if I set up just a bit more thoughtfully, you have a side edge, flag off the wall, and you can even actively press nice. off that foot to take you over. Okay, yeah, nice straight arm. Yeah. The foot's flagging below me. Quite comfortably reach that. Another little flag. Whoop, bit of momentum. Yeah. My foot swap. Step through, bit of a flag. Shake out if you need. And then I think it's crucial to sometimes know in this, I'm just in a weird position, I can't actually generate any kind of momentum if I use all the footholds. Again, that flag yeah. opens our body up to reach this hold and celebrate on the top. Yeah. Oof! Nice. It's a really nice flow side climb, I really yeah. enjoy it. That's good. Nice foot through. Oh, foot swap. Where's this here? Yeah, a bit of momentum. That's good. Ooh. Hey, if that's what's working, go for it. Nice. You're throwing in all the flags here. <laughs> Every, all of them. <laughs> That brings to an end our four intermediate techniques with Ben. Thank you so much yeah, for literally walking me through <laughs> those. I feel like climbing is really just made up of the basics. And if you can nail the basics, it serves you so well as you start to kind of like climb in your grade and in mm -hmm. your skill set. 
Um, so yeah, thank you so much for yeah. all of your expert knowledge today. My pleasure. Ben, it was some help. It was, it really <laughs> was. Ben coaches out of the Climbing Hangar in Liverpool. So if you're in the market for some expert climbing coaching, then get in touch with them. Because <laughs> it'll get you springing around on volumes that you didn't think you could trust. And yeah, I hope you found it useful and we will see you in our next video. Bye. Bye.